mind is the master power that molds and makes. And man is mind. And evermore he takes the tool of thought and shaping what he wills brings forth a thousand joys or a thousand ills. We think in secret and it comes to pass. Our environment is but our looking glass. Do you know James Allen wrote those words a little over 100 years ago. I began to study them close to 50 years ago. Every year they mean a little more to me. I want to talk to you here about the law of thinking. Thinking is a powerful force. It's been said that it's the most powerful force we're capable of. Do you know Archibald McLeish, a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright, had a character stand up in a play one time called The Secret of Freedom. And the character says, the only thing about a man that is a man is his mind. Everything else you'll find in a pig or a horse. Do you know it sounds like a funny line, but it's true. Everything else you will find in a pig or a horse. You see, the mind, it's the most powerful force in the world. And thinking is a very, very powerful form of energy. Thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space. Now, as we go into the laws of thinking, I want to refer to a few points from Raymond Hollowell. He said, to the average person, life is an enigma. A deep mystery, a complex and incomprehensible problem, or appears so. But it's very simple if one holds the key. You see, mystery is just another name for ignorance. All things are mysterious when they're not understood. But when we understand life, it no longer appears mysterious. Do you know, until I was 26, life was a real mystery to me. It was an incomprehensible problem. And, of course, I had many problems. But then I began to study, and I began to study this information. And, you know, it took me a while, but as I started to adopt the concepts and adapt my mind to them, my life started to change. My problems started to sort of disappear. I started to earn a lot more money. I was living in a healthy body very rarely ever being ill. I noticed that I started to attract different people into my life, more interesting people. You see, the truth was, I was just becoming a more interesting person. A person's interesting because they're interested. And you see, as we start thinking powerful thoughts, everything starts to happen. Now, let me share something then. Raymond Hollywell said, he said, We're progressive beings, you and I, a creature of constant growth before whom lies an illimitable ocean of progress to be navigated and conquered only by development and culture of our inherent powers. The progress of the individual is largely determined by what? What do you think it is? Let me share that again. The progress of the individual is largely determined by, it's a good question, isn't it? It's by his ruling mental state. Because the mind is the basic factor in governing power in the entire life. My life and your life, you see. Attention should be given to the predominant mental state, for it will regulate the action and direction of all one's forces faculties, and powers, the sum total of which will inevitably determine many particular experiences and the personal fate. You see, the ruling state is like the CPU. You're familiar with your computer. Well, that's, that's what the ruling state of the computer is. You see? The ruling state of mind is made up of various mental attitudes, um, which the individual adopts towards things, events, and life in general. If the attitudes are broad in mind, optimistic in tone, and true of life, his predominant mental state will be correspond and exhibit a highly constructive and progressive tendency. As almost all the forces of the personality function through the conscious mind in one way or another, 
And as the daily mental and physical acts are largely controlled by the conscious mind, it's obvious that the leading mental state must determine the direction which the powers of the individual must proceed. You see, the ruling mental state is everything. I know that you and I have been trained to believe that we've got to change what's going on out there. You know, we've got to fix this and fix that. And we have literally been programmed to live through our senses, to go by what we hear, see, smell, taste, or touch. But you know, there's been little thought given to our higher faculties, perception, the will, intuition, memory, reason, imagination. And see, they're all our inner faculties, and that's where it really happens. This is where it all begins, inside. You don't have to worry about changing what's going on out there. I don't care if it's your bank account or the health of your body. You're going to find the x-rays will show a different you. The bank account will show a different balance. And everything in life will begin to change as you take over the power of thought. Thought is a very, very powerful force. Let me share something that Raymond Hollywell says on thought. He says, thought is a subtle element. Although it is invisible to the physical sight, it is an actual force of substance, as real as electricity, light, heat, water, or even stone. We are surrounded by a vast ocean of thought through which our thoughts pass like currents of electricity or tiny streaks of light or musical waves. You can flash your thoughts from pole to pole completely around the world, many times in less than a single second. Now think of what he's saying. You can flash your thoughts right around the globe several times in less than a single second. Scientists tell us that thought is compared with the speed of light. They tell us our thoughts travel at the rate of 186,000 miles per second. We have a hard time comprehending that. He goes on to point out that our thought travels 930,000 times faster than the sound of our voice. No other force or power in the universe yet known is as great or as quick. It is a proven fact scientifically that the mind is a battery force, the greatest of any known element. You see, the thinker is like the computer processor. You know, when it's finely tuned, it really works fast. You can think. And what you think ultimately produces the results in your life. See, there's laws to thought. I'm going to tell you something that I've learned beyond a shadow of a doubt. The thoughts that you think and turn over to your emotional mind instantly, by law, control the vibratory rate of your body. Your body is a mass of magnetic energy. It truly is. You know, if you put your body in front of an infrared television camera in a completely dark room, you just see it as a glistening, radiating, gleaming form. As a matter of fact, if you could hear it, it would be like a symphonic concert being played. Oh, I know, to the eye, it just looks like a thing, you know. But it's not a thing. The body itself is one of the most magnificent instruments on the planet, and you live in one. And it's how you think that is going to dictate what this body is going to do. We know that our actions produce our results. If we want to change our results, we've got to change our actions. However, if you don't go to the thought, the actions are never, oh, the actions may change temporarily. But believe me, the thoughts that you think repeatedly become fixed in your subconscious mind. And those thoughts are going to determine what happens in your life. Make no mistake about it. Now, play with this for a moment. We hear a lot about positive and negative attitudes or positive and negative thinking. Well, some think that we deal with two forces. 
That is, we attract the good and we must do away with the bad. You've heard that many times. We attract the good, we must do away with the bad. Well, that is not true. For example, if we are cold, we do not work with cold and heat alike in order to get warm. This is very simple processing that we're going through here, mental processing. We build a fire and we gather around the fire and we enjoy the heat that is extended from it and we become warm. As we build warmth, the cold disappears, for the cold is the absence of the heat. Just like dark is absence of the light. Let there be light. To be warm, we give our whole thought to those things which tend to create warmth. We ignore the cold in thinking of heat and bring forth heat. Prosperity and poverty are not two things. They are merely two sides of one thing, the same thing. There is but one power, rightly or wrongly used. We cannot think of plenty and then worry about the unfavorable conditions that may seem apparent. If you want to change the results in your life, and I'm just working on the premise that you do, or you wouldn't need me watching this film right now, give your thought to your mind. Give serious thought to this series of, overviews that I'm doing on the laws that you're studying. You see, Huxley was right. He said the only corner of the universe that we can be certain of improving, it's our own self. That's all. You know all those things we want to change outside? They're all a reflection of what's going on inside. Well, that may be a big idea for you right now, but As you study this for a week, a month, a year, and then come back and hear me say that, it's going to sound like a totally different statement. You choose your thoughts, and your thoughts create your life. You truly do become what you think about. There is a law of thinking. Make no mistake about it. This is Bob Proctor, and thank you.